ultimate goal of exciting the fans. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Steve, for your opening remarks. Great, thank you. I'm gonna have a few remarks, as Eric said, uh, to kick things off, and then Steve and I will answer any questions that you have. Um, first, I wanna thank all of you for being here. Um, it's certainly exciting. Uh, we've got four deserving um, challengers for the championship this evening um, and tomorrow and on Sunday. So we wish all the competitors uh, good luck. We've got a potential repeat winner this evening with um, um, with our um, friend um, Ben Rhodes. <clears throat> well, it's a good start so far. <laughs> so, and ben has been a deserving champion and. Um, but it's great to have three challengers there. Tomorrow we will crown a new champion in the Xfinity Series. And then we have two drivers that are going for um, for their second championship and two that are new. So really exciting storylines. Um, and that's what you guys do when you do so well. So for many of you, um, Steve and I get to see you at the racetrack um, every week. Other you, others of you, um, we see you less than that. But it's all important what you do for our sport to bring those storylines to life to our race fans uh, is really important. So I want to thank each and every one of you for what you do. Um, it is important. Um, obviously, I have a, <clears throat> a friend up here, um, and Steve O'Donnell, who's our chief operating officer. This is the first time Steve has joined me here. Um, I'm excited to have Steve here, um, not because it was his birthday yesterday, um, but because of all the great things. Oh, did I mention that it was Steve's birthday yesterday? <laughs> Happy birthday, Steve. We won't sing for you this time. Um, but I do think, um, you know, Steve deserves to be up here. He's, uh, he's worked incredibly hard. He's been a longtime employee of NASCAR. Um, and under his direction, he's, he's done some terrific things, and I'll get into that in some of my opening. But I thought it would be appropriate for Steve to be up here with me. Um, <clears throat> Kind of the meat of the matter about what I want to talk about. Uh, what I want to talk about is the successes that this sport has had. Um, we've just we're about to conclude um, our 74th season, and what a terrific season it's been in 2022. I'll get to that in a second, but I thought it'd be appropriate to actually take a step back. Um, many of you were in the room in Miami when I had the opportunity to do this for the first time. Um, and I think we're at that particular time, we were, we were a sport that frankly was um, struggling. Um, our ratings were down, our attendance was down. There weren't a lot of bright spots. And I stood in front of you and I talked about our, death, our best, based in, best days being in front of us. I know that seemed kind of foolish and maybe some of you were snickering. It's like, <laughs> I'm not sure that's gonna happen. Um, but we, where we sit here today, I think that's exactly what's happened. Um, and I think you, you look at 2019, our ratings were up. Um, our attendance was up in 2019. 2020, we started the season off with, um, with a sitting president at the Daytona 500 and then the extraordinary events of Ryan Newman at the end of that race um, and how scary that was. But you look at the, the first four races of that year, our ratings were up um, and then COVID hit. And you know, COVID was a, a brand new world for us. And on, on March 13th, when we closed down, right, and, sh and shut down our operations and sent everyone home from Atlanta, that following Monday, Steve and, and other senior members of the team, we sat down in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we devised a plan, or started to architect a plan that would get us back to racing, uh, which is exactly what we did. And that was a very scary time, those 71 days, and, and what our industry did to come back and collaborate to get back to, to be the first sport competing, which is what we did on, on May 18th at Darlington. Initially without fans, and then the first sport back to competing with race fans um, when we went to, uh, to Miami, uh, Homestead Miami Speedway, and then on to Talladega. And, but it was the oh. events that, bless you, Jenna, the events that happened in, in June of 2020, I think set the course of NASCAR to change where the sport was from a reputation standpoint and from a relevance standpoint. And that was the stance, stance on social justice. It's interesting, we just had Jimmy Johnson here, what terrific news having Jimmy 
come back in the ownership position he's taking in Petty and GMS. And it's great to have Jimmy back. But Jimmy led a group of drivers to create a video that talked about learning, being educated, doing better um, with respect to understanding what was happening in this, in this country and, and kind of the reckoning that was, was happening. And Jimmy gave permission for the sport to come out and do the things that we did and say the things that we did. Um, and that changed the face of this sport forever. And you look at the results that have happened just in 2020, frankly, new ownership with, with Michael Jordan and Pitbull um, and others, frankly, people of color are coming to the sport. Um, our own hiring practices and what we've done, you know, what has happened throughout the garage um, and drivers, um, of, um, like a Daniel Suarez winning this year, a Bubba Wallace winning again this year. It's important um, and it's changing the face of the sport as we, as we move forward. And you can do that without taking away from what's happening with your, your existing fans, fans who have been here for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Because they want, they want great racing, they want storylines, they want their drivers to win, um, they want us to serve them content that is interesting, unique, and special. And that's, that's what we've done. While we've been able to serve, serve this new fan. So, have uh, finished 2020, it was a, a terrific year again. Attendance was a bit wonky because we had limitations on, like we are here two weeks, uh, two years ago. I think we had 11,000 fans, right? <clears throat> Last year we were packed. This year we sold out of the Sunday race in March. Um, 2021 was a special year um, in that we had the boldest schedule ever, or at least in 50 years at NASCAR. Um, and that really defined NASCAR doing things boldly and differently than they've done before. And that also added to the reputation and the relevance of the sport. Um, and that is something that um, continued as we looked at, oh, and, oh, by the way, the ratings were, were strong and attendance was up again um, versus 2019. Then you fast forward into 2022, I guess I am getting to the end because we, we're doing this chronologically. Um, and I think the thing that um, I was struck by is, you think of the clash at the Coliseum and the importance of what the Bush light at the clash at the, at the Coliseum, what it meant to the sport. It was a proof point for, that we could do something like that, right? That we could build a track inside a stadium and, and certainly an iconic one. That was important for us. Um, and again, it showed being bold and, and being innovative and being relevant. Um, the biggest thing to me, and that was incredibly important, and frankly, it's, it's uh, I've never been in a NASCAR race where every single person that you that you talk to in this industry, drivers, fans, everyone had a smile on their face. Everyone. It was unbelievable. Never seen that in an NASCAR race. Some's complain about something. I mean, right? <laughs> Not there. Um, but importantly, it was the next gen car and the introduction of the next gen car that was so important. Um, if you consider that before this year in the next gen car, you had to have a relationship with five, one of five race teams if you wanted to come into this sport. You had to. This car changed that. So what does this car do? There was a relevance to this car for our OE partners. The styling was fantastic of this car. And then the question would be, well, what's the raceability of the car? And the raceability of the car was such that it resulted in 19 different winners, so more than half the field won a race in NASCAR this year. Five first-time winners. More green flag path, uh, more passes throughout the field in a single season. By that, by the way, that happened four weeks ago. Um, so I would say the racing is, has been, is delivered, it's been terrific. I did want to touch on, on one thing relative to the, the safety of the vehicle. I'm sure there's gonna be a question that's gonna come from, from one of you. Um, the car was designed as safety is the number one priority for that car. That's how it was designed. It was designed to make sure that 
the horrific situation that we saw with uh, with Ryan Newman of the Daytona 500 and the intrusion that happened into his vehicle, or the crushed roof that happened with Joey Logano in Talladega, that those things needed, the strength of the car needed to be there. And that is something that was first and foremost um, into why that car was designed. Um, so I would say, and I want to give a public um, shout out to Steve O'Donnell and his team, nothing short of spectacular, and what a bold play, right? So a year ago, I think someone asked me, what's, what's the, what keeps you up at night? The car kept me up at night. Whether we could put that car on the racetrack at the Clash of Coliseum, you've had some, you know, supply chain issues and all the rest of it. And if you think about it, get to the Clash of the Coliseum and you don't have a race car, there's no safety net. You can't go back to the old, it's gone, it's too late, you're done. We wouldn't race. And I know that sounds dramatic, but if you think about it, there was no safety net, no wires. It's our, it was our car, it needed to be on the racetrack. And then working with the race teams and the drivers, we make sure the car was, was as racy as it could be. And I think it delivered against that too. Um, as you look forward to our 75th season, um, more exciting news, for the first time in our 75 year history, we are gonna race a street course. And not just any city, we're gonna race in Chicago. And not at the outskirts of Chicago, we're gonna be in downtown Chicago, on Lake Michigan, right? On Lakeshore Drive, and on Michigan Avenue, on Columbus. And it's gonna be unlike any NASCAR race ever, not just because it's on the street course, but because of what we are going to do around the development and the hospitality of that racetrack. It will look nothing like any NASCAR race we've ever had. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.